Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. <clears throat> um, first of all, let me say thank you to all of you who have subscribed and who are watching my videos and clicking like. I so appreciate it. I really do. So, today, <clears throat> um, I am going to be doing an elephant journal using these beautiful, sweet... Um, it's a kit from Took, my friend Took at Took's Craft Table. And they're just these sweet, whimsical papers. Um, and we're going to be doing this a bit as a collaboration. And I'm filming ahead because I got going and I um, emailed Took uh, some quotes that I had made. And she said, well, let's do this as a collab and we'll do it in May. And I'm, I was like, oh, that's so exciting. I would love to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I just need to get this this cord out of the way. Sorry about that. Hope I didn't jiggle you. Um, and they're just so sweet and so lovely. And I love elephants. Um, and so, but I kind of have this idea in my head and I can't just stop, you know, it just, so I'm going to film this ahead and I'll publish it when we're doing it. And it's right now it's the middle of April. Um, and I, I'm using, I've got these beautiful craft consortium paper background covers. Um, so this is cardstock. But the thing that I can't get out of my brain is I just watched Barbara at 49 Dragonflies do a soft spine cover where she poked or punched holes in the cover and created a soft spine and then did this very cool chain stitch binding of the of the fabric to the cover. And I really want to try that for this um, because I have this. I went through all my books and it, I think this is going to be the perfect size for these signatures. It's a National Audubon Society um, encyclopedia. Uh, that has been sitting on my shelf for a long time. I got this originally from a live sale from Jessica Rapp. Thank you, Jess. Um, and I'm just gonna cut this off, but then look, I have all these yummy kind of tropical fabrics and I've got some ribbons with elephants and yeah. So I'm just excited about incorporating fabrics, which was my plan from the get-go. I mean, look at that one, pink elephants. And here's one. I mean, it's just too, it's just too fun. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, and the other thing I should say is once this is done, I'm going to donate the proceeds of this journal to an elephant um, rescue park. I haven't decided which one yet. And I also think um, I may actually auction it on eBay um, instead of putting it in my Etsy store, because I'm hoping that perhaps uh, you folks will will want to, to contribute and have a, an elephant journal and know that the proceeds from the journal goes to help actual retired rescued elephants. So this is my plan. Okay, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I need to do is... I'm going to cut out the book block and I'm all, oh, well, good thing I'm cutting out the spine too, because apparently the spine is in, in trouble. So to cut out the book block, um, I'm just going to pull the book block. Oops. Apparently, <laughs> good thing I'm cutting out the spine, pull the book block away and running my blade kind of shallowly down the spine. And once you do that, it's super easy to get the back cover done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And this is a very cool book block because look, this particular one has fungi. Who doesn't love some fungi? Tur uh, frogs, <laughs> not turtles, foxes. Oh, Tracy. Foxes. Tracy, let me know if you want, Tracy Fox, if you see this, let me know if you want the Fox pages. I'd be happy to send them to you. Um, yeah, flamingos. Oh, you know what? There's some flamingos in this kit. Maybe I'll save the flamingos. 
some fishies. This is a, this is just a particularly excellent um, uh, volume. I almost said episode volume. I don't know where my head is at today. I'm on vacation. I feel like I'm finally catching up with some sleep. Um, but you know, vacation brain. So I'm just going to run my craft. This is not a craft knife. This is a box cutter. Wow. Words today. Words. <laughs> Down the sides. So I will save this. That's excellent. All right. So I have some really nice and rather elegant kind of, kind of, um, oh, which was the front? That was the front and that was the back, I do believe. Um, yeah. So I think I'll trim this up just a smidge here. So the tutorial that I just watched, uh, Barbara from 49 Dragonflies do, she just did a um, design team project for the Digital Collage Club, which I have joined. I highly recommend that. Not sponsored, although I would love to be. Um, and I do use their digitals and she used a Jane Austen kit and she used a um, William Morris kit, which looked really nice. And I will link that video below if you want to watch that yourself. But it was just, and she had said that she had watched some other YouTuber whom, with whom I'm not familiar. So I should probably go and watch that, but I think I've got the general gist. So you can follow those links and see all the creative ladies who are coming up with these very cool things. Okay, so. Here we go. This is my cover. It's going to fit very nicely around my signatures. I'll probably center them like so. There's still a lot to go in these signatures, so it is definitely not going to be that skinny. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a two inch spine um, will give me plenty of room see this is these each square is an inch for those of you who are metric people i love the metric system it's brilliant but i'm in the u.s what can you do so here is each one of these squares is an inch so there's this is a would be a two inch spine and if those are straight it does give quite a bit of room for expansion of those three signatures um and i like that because i expect this will grow i'm just thinking should i actually make it bigger should i make it two and a half that is what a two and a half would look like that looks seems huge i'm gonna get stick to two we're gonna do two okay so now the other thing decision i have to make before i get going is you can have the fabric come to the outside or you can have the fabric come to the inside. If I have it come to the inside, I will definitely want to wrap this edge in some kind of um, fabric. I could use sari silk. I have, I have sari silk. I have lots of sari silk. I could, I also want this to have like a tropical feel to it. Because, you know, the kit has both Indian and African elephants in it. Because elephants are threatened everywhere they are. So if I do, if I wrap the fabric in sari silk, when I go to punch the holes, I will have to punch through the fabric and through, but that might add another layer of interest and color so i'm not i tend not to do a ton of color in my projects um i tend to be very earth tones i think that might look really nice so there's that piece of fabric for one side let me see do i have something that would also work for the back cover that is just like a long piece of 
sorry. Ooh, I just found this. I know it's off track, but look how cute that little piece is. Look at that cute little elephant. Maybe that should be my cover. Oh, she's so cute. I just love elephants. So I'm so excited that Took did this kit. Yeah, uh, that might wind up being, being my cover. Um, I have that elephant ribbon, but I don't want to use the elephant ribbon to wrap the um, sides. Hold on. Hold, hold on. I have other bits of sari silk. So this kit has all kinds of beautiful colors. It also has a lot of blues. Um, I'm kind of focusing on the greens. There's some African elephants, but it also has a lot of beautiful blues. So maybe I should grab some blue sari silk also for the back. Let me see, hold on. Here is some light blue, um, a purple. Okay, hold on, I just found uh, some blue. Sorry, didn't mean to go away. So this is, stringy. This is a piece of, of blue sari that could also, yeah, totally doing that. I'm on this. Okay, where's my back cover? I'm just going to move my, my signatures to the side where they will be safe because I am not a safe craft. Okay, so now how do I want to adhere this sari? to the buy so so by by wrapping this edge this gives me the opportunity uh to put the um the spine onto the inside cover oh goodness do i need to now think about my inside cover this inside cover is neat and tidy it's just this edge so what i shall do is i'm not going to um do anything to this inside cover except perhaps add a an envelope kind of pocket which i can just glue on same for the back just be pockets so i'm not going to worry about decorating this in advance okay so this is all kinds of stringy That's okay. I don't mind it being uneven and all kinds of stringy because do I? I just don't want it to unravel any further. I think it's okay that it's in the, on the inside. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just, um, I'm going to fabric tack. Ooh, that's all crusty. I just refilled this. It must have splooged. You know how it does? I have some. There we go. <laughs> this is a, um, a sweet sugar bell bottle with a sweet sugar bell top. Okay. Front cover. Inside front cover. Covering with. Sorry, silk. Wait, no, I just got it on my. Okay, I'm going to smoosh a little bit. I'm going to smoosh along the edge here as well because I can, because I have excess. So yeah, so right now I'm thinking I am going to, um, this is, this top edge is nice and straight. So I'm going to use that top edge. And then when I cut the holes, well, it did come through a little bit. So be it. Okay, so that's a little bit more even. <laughs> oh, sticky. Oh, so how are you all today? Are you on vacation? I know a lot of, all of Massachusetts is on April vacation right now. I think other places have had different vacations. Um, this vacation was sorely needed. I was feeling very burnt out before beforehand. 
still not quite where I ought to be in terms of recovery, but here we are, halfway through the week. Um, it's Wednesday, and I've had a pretty low-key um, vacation so far. I've been doing some some businessy stuff. I got my taxes done. Yes, I waited to the last minute. But it all worked out. Had some banking stuff that I had to get taken care of, and we did that, which was super stressful. And then, um, oh, we went out for dinner um, at, at, I think it was, it was in December. It was either my birthday or Christmas. My close friend, my best friend, um, gave me a gift certificate to my favorite restaurant. So I'm vegan. Um, so there aren't, it, it's hard. It's hard being vegan and going out to dinner. There are, um, we, I can usually find something that's close to vegan. So if I, we go out, um, I'm, I can usually make do, but, um, there is a restaurant in Providence, Rhode Island, which is not far from here. It's about a 40 minute drive and, um, they have actual vegan dishes on their menu, which is so exciting. It's, it's an, it's an Indian restaurant called India and it is so good. It is delicious. I think I have to but I'm just grabbing a new thing. I haven't actually, of course, maybe some of you have been to India. My impression is that it's pretty authentic. Um, it's just, it's delicious. So we did that. My husband, my uh, adult daughter and I, she's a college student, uh, went out for dinner to India and had a lovely time. I went to yoga. Um, let's see, when did I go to yoga? I went to yoga on Wednesday, Saturday? Sunday. Went to yoga on Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, which was delightful. So yeah. And I got some yard work done. Did I say that? I weed whacked. We have a, uh, our, our, our backyard is fairly rectangular and we have a six foot tall stockade fence to keep the huskies from wandering. And so I, maybe I'm just going to use that on here. Um, so just making sure I've got it the right way around. Um, yeah, so I, went around the outside of the fence because we have an invasive plant here called Japanese knotweed. And it, it looks and grows a lot like bamboo, but it's not nice bamboo and it's highly invasive and it will take over everything given half a chance. So in order to keep the Japanese knotweed at bay, oops, that's not, a little bit further towards the edge there. Um, I, in the springtime, I find that if I go every weekend and weed whack, weed whack it down around the outside of the fence, um, that I'm able to keep it under control and just weaken it enough so that it doesn't take over the fence. Because as I said, we have two husky mixes and Need to keep them inside fence. Yep, so that's been my week so far. I haven't really done anything else all that momentous. I really needed a, a kind of a laying low type of a weekend or a week. <laughs> I finished, I did my six pack collab, got my pockets in. You know what I just made? Maybe you'll like this. I just made these. These are pretty cool. These are die cuts of three different papers. They're, this is the metallic Tim Holtz paper. This is black cardstock. This is craft card. And I patinaed them and distressed them with different things on the front. And then I covered them in the Tim Holtz Ranger translucent crackle paste and some alcohol inks and, or the patinas the Ranger patinas, and I also used some of the kind of the oily rub-on kind of patina stuff. I, I like how they came out. The crackle paste looks like 
old varnish, old weathered varnish, don't you think? Yeah, like how those came out. So those are going with the six pack collab project. Okay, so there are my front and back covers bound. All right, now for why I'm really, truly excited. Well, one of the reasons. So I want to make a soft spine. Now, when when um, Barbara did it, she used a piece of, of um, uh, canvas that, you know, that's like comes in a, an art canvas pad that you can pull out like a sheet of paper and you can print on it. I do have some of that. But what I want to do is I want to take, I have all this silk and I want to use, oh, that would be a good base. And that's kind of so, the brocade in that is so pretty. Um, I don't really want to cover that up. It's not quite long, so I'm not going to use that, but I will use this. And I've used this for a spine in another project. So I want to use this as like a base and then add all of my other beautiful um, saris and offcuts. Look at the warp on this. This is the, I mean, this is, this seems like real silk. It's so strong. I'm, I'm not throwing that out. I'm saving that. Where am I going to save this? I don't know. I'll find a spot. Sip it over there for now. Okay, so it's not quite tall enough this way, but it would be this way. Is this two inches? No, this is not two inches. Is this two inches? That's not two inches. All right, so I'm gonna do it this way. And so it needs to be this tall. Okay, so I'm just reaching for a ruler. Let's get everything lined up. I have this great cutting mat now. I'm very happy with this cutting mat as opposed to the Tim Holtz glass um, mixed media mat, which is excellent. I have absolutely nothing against it. But, well, maybe I do have one thing, I guess. It, it, when these lights, I have some ring lights above here so that I always have some, some light on the desk. And the ring lights bounce back. You know, they have this shine on the desk. And, and that bothers me. And, and you can't do this kind of cutting with it, which I think I do more of this kind of cutting. I'm just lining this stuff up again. I do more of this kind of cutting than I do mixed media. So if I do mix media, I think it's just easier. Whoops, I had that right. Oh, no, this is right. It's just easier for me to pull in either that glass mat or just, you know, a piece of, of paper. Um, which is a shame because that was a, a, a gift because it is an expensive piece of um, equipment, that glass mat. But I'm just, this this cutting mat, I'm finding to be so much more useful. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this. Whoops. To the right height. There we go. And now I'm going to cut it to two inches. Um, I think I use this side. Maybe I'll trim up this side so that it's straight. Try and get it somewhat square. Oops. I'm, I'm not terribly adept at this technique yet, but I'm working on it. Okay, that can go with my other little piece. Okay, so this this is now pretty square. Okay, so I want my spine to be two inches, but I do need a little bit of overlap. So maybe it looks like to me like a half an inch on either side so I can poke or punch holes in this cover now and sew through the holes. So if a half an inch on either side, that means I need three inches of fabric. 
and I'm just going to give it myself a little tiny bit extra for good measure. Like so. Yay. Okay. That worked. Okay, so that is now going to be the base of my spine. But I want to decorate this with all of my fabulous elephants. So, and I'll, I'm going to glue and sew. So I want that elephant and I want the tree like that. And then I have some other obvious elephants ribbons. There's my other obvious elephant ribbons. I want this elephant. He's so cute. And I'm just going to cut some of that red off, but not cut the next elephant in line. And I think I have one more elephant ribbon in here. Yes, it's quite wide. I mean, this could be a spine in and of itself. I'm sure someday I will use it as a, as a spine in and of itself. Okay, so these elephants, in order to get, I want to get a, one whole elephant. Isn't counting elephants a way of counting seconds, like Mississippi? One elephant, or am I making that up? Does anybody count seconds with elephants? I always counted seconds with Mississippis. Seems like it will work. Mississippi, Mississippi elephant. Maybe it's a little short. Random thoughts one has while well, crafting. All right, I'm going to have to cut the backside off of this elephant. I apologize. Please don't get mad at me. Okay. So I have, have me some elephants. So I'm going to put that one in the middle there and I've got this elephant and I've got this elephant, but I should mix it up with some other things. What other things do I have that I can add in? I have this pretty piece. And I have, I have some pretty trim. Should I put that at the bottom? Or maybe I should have some trim. No, because it's going to go on the inside. Some trim, trim here. I got to remember that these edges are going to be underneath here and have holes punched in them. So I'm just going to use a small piece of this trim. Okay, what else have I got? I've got, let's see, this has some pretty sparklies. Let's see. I have this has some pretty sparklies. I'm worried. I'm starting to worry that this is gonna be really thick. What do you guys think? Do you think I should be worried about how thick it is? Look at that beautiful piece. That should be like a pocket on the inside, don't you think? You know what? I pulled all these out of a, a bin that I have. And now I'm thinking I didn't put... Oh, look how gorgeous this is. Okay. Um, I, I think... I think this... I'm going to cut off just one scallop's worth here. Go all the way up and maybe use it in a couple of places because gosh, it's not pretty. Like that. 
and like this. I suppose I could do this because you can still see that it looks like the elephant is coming out of the jungle. <clears throat> Maybe we'll just have it peeking, some of those flowers peeking out from behind there. And I've got this elephant here. And then hopefully some of these will come back. Maybe I'll just do that. It's not, it's not elephant I mean it is an elephant journal so I feel like I need you know what I'll cut this in two and I'll use some here and I will use some here and there we have all of our elephants yes I know it's going to be thick it may be hard to sew through Um, you're right. You're not wrong about that. I just need a little bit to, at the top here for the, the effect of three. But then I would cover up my, my first elephant. I want to cover up, cover up my first elephant. Um, I'm just pawing through. This is awfully pretty. And I want to add a little bit of trim there. That might work. Cut the flowers off. Trim this down so that it's not the full thickness. And then I'll substitute in this there. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to glue this down and sew it all together and I'll be right back.